Hey there everybody, and welcome back to more Haunting Ground. Well, last time we were locked in a mysterious room with a beckoning voice calling us forth, and I think today we should go ahead and find out who it was that was calling us forward. Alchemists have the ability to convert it into power. We can live forever! Your Azoth, Fiona, belongs to me. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Come to me, Fiona. I will now extract the Azoth latent in you in order to realize the everlasting life of Oriola's belly. And say hello to the, I guess, real form of Aurealis Lorenzo Belli, that elderly gentleman that we happened to strike down before, is actually not really dead. He, uh, I guess he managed to energize himself just enough from making out with Ricardo earlier that he is now in his fully powered alchemist form, which means that he is actually a lot more dangerous than he was before. He actually now has the ability to teleport, which I think we will be seeing in just a... There we go. Yep, he has the ability to teleport. He has the ability to just send out a shockwave to knock us down. He does have a flaming punch. We will be seeing plenty of that later for right now. Really, all that... Oh, the only option we have is just keep on running down these seemingly repeating hallways. I'm not sure if this is just to confuse the player or make them wondering, uh, make them wonder if they're just running around in circles. But there actually is an end, and more than anything, you do not actually want to stop and fight Lorenzo in this state. He is actually very dangerous. But with those hallways of truth out of the way, we find ourselves in pretty much the final puzzle of the game. Now we have a crossroads here and a plaque kind of giving us a vague clue as to what we're going to have to figure out. We're going to have to figure out the final pure color and as we investigate each side here we see that there is a particularly colored door on both sides. Now, I guess to some degree having knowledge of the color wheel and complementary colors and all that would probably help quite a bit here, but really you could probably brute force your way through this puzzle. Invariably, all we have to do is reach the color black. Now, how we can do that is done in any particular number of ways. I think, I think there's only a finite set of doors or uh, variations of the doors that we can come across. Strange idea. You're headed down the path of the wet method. 
but really the easiest way to approach this puzzle is just keep on going down the right door. Maybe, maybe there's some deeper meaning in taking the quote-unquote right path? Also, occasionally, Lorenzo will taunt us, I guess? It's kind of hard to say. I'm actually not for certain why he doesn't just continue to chase us in these rooms, but I guess it's just going with the theme of never wanting to interrupt the player while they're in the middle of a puzzle. But I guess while we are going through these rooms, I should cover what uh, the plot is at this point. Uh, Ugo and Ricardo were homunculi made by Lorenzo there to house Azoth, or life essence, which he would then farm, suck up, and use to keep himself eternally young. The problem was that, well, Ricardo ended up being crazy and kind of megalomaniacal. Looks like you got yourself lost, child and kind of wanted to keep the Azoth in power to himself, and, well, Ugo ended up falling in love with and marrying a human woman. That human woman, uh, Aelia, ended up well, obviously giving birth to Fiona, and I guess in the end, Ricardo lured or kidnapped Fiona, and well, we're just kind of brought to where we are right now. This is our final door, the black door we were searching for. It's actually kind of weird because I think red and green are supposed to be complementary colors, but I think when you combine them it actually just makes a shade of brown, so I'm not sure why we ended up going through a black door in the end, but there you go. Also we find ourselves in a very familiar room even though there are slight differences from the ones that are the particular room we saw when we first entered the House of Truth. Yeah, there is no pathway leading back out. And as we investigate behind the bars here, we'll actually be seeing there is no door or there are no doorways on this particular floor. So by rather simple process of elimination, we can pretty much assume that what we are going to be looking for is going to be down the adjacent set of stairs. Now I'm not exactly certain if this repetition of the environment is meant to say that maybe the House of Truth is changing as Lorenzo gains his power. Or maybe they just ran out of environments to use, but either way, I, I actually still really do enjoy the overall look of the House of Truth. It's, it's actually pretty imposing and confusing. Also, I figured out a good strategy for the failures. Yeah, instead of kicking them repeatedly, a good shove will instantly kill them. But before we continue, I actually want to investigate this little room here. This actually leads into a very important fiery chamber. Yeah, that large pit of lava and magma in the center is actually pretty much a very large power source for this house of truth. But it is not currently running at full capacity, seems to be missing something. Hmm. 
but it seems that Huey has an idea of what we actually need here. Almost kind of assumed that maybe I could just send him going, but I think all that did was actually just direct him to sniff out something in the room. And what we need is not actually in this room, so sorry to confuse you, Huey. No, we need to keep on searching around and try to find out what was missing from that, uh... I don't even know what you would call that. Let's let's call it a switch. But it is a bit confusing at this point why they felt the need to keep throwing failures of all things at you. I mean, as far as I know, Lorenzo won't ever actually start chasing you in this section, and well, that's pretty much the entire point of the failures, is to gain the attention of the stalker. Oh, but it seems that Huey has gotten a scent of something. Why, it's that symbol that we actually saw way earlier during the Debilitas fight in that chapel. Yeah, apparently this is the Staff of Catechus. I'm not actually sure offhand what Catechus is. It actually reminds me more of the symbol for... Uh, God, what was it? The, it's the, uh, the medical practitioner or the... I don't know. Either way, it's got some deeper meaning, I'm sure. I'm sure there was some reason it was locked away with a birthmark that really hasn't ever come up on Fiona's back. But with our new cane, we can actually now go back and hopefully turn on whatever that mechanism is supposed to do. Yet again, we are just continuing to be propelled forward merely by the game's pushing and not by any kind of common sense, I, I guess. Hippocratic, that's what I was trying to think of. Hippocratic Oath. plan to keep this up. Let's finish this, Fiona. Fiona. And just like that, we have now reached the final boss fight with young Lorenzo here. As I mentioned before, he is very damaging. He has a number of very difficult to dodge maneuvers. 
And the actual boss fight here is pretty different from what we've had to deal with so far. It may seem initially that it's some kind of puzzle fight, but really in the end it's just doing a lot of damage to him that will invariably win this fight for you. Now there are a number of different ways we can do that. One of them is to kick these pebbles of what I'm th assuming to be magnesia into the pit there in the center. And it will cause the lava to shoot up and a few little flames to uh, linger about in the arena. Which for some reason Lorenzo will rather stupidly just directly walk into. We can also turn on the fans that will blow hot air directly onto Lorenzo. And they're actually a lot harder to time than you may at first realize. And really overall they just don't seem to do enough damage to really be worth triggering in the first place. Now the issue becomes I don't really think that Lorenzo actually takes any damage from the magnesia or autonomy that we've been collecting so hopefully you used it all on the old Lorenzo or possibly another boss because I think they're pretty much useless in this particular instance. Now that's not to say that, you know, with a little practice and a little perseverance that he isn't easy to take down. I mean, he's still very weak to Huey jumping on his back and gnawing at the back of his head. But the danger then becomes if Huey does too much damage to him, he will start to ignore you and just go straight after Huey. And on the hard mode, well that it spells pretty much an instant game over. But I, ju I guess just to go over the moves yet again for Lorenzo, you've already seen his teleporting maneuver, which he will I guess do something of a knee stomp on you that will knock you down. He also has a rather slow fiery punch that he'll use against you. It's not too difficult to dodge, but the wind up may throw you off a bit. And he does have that little flame spout maneuver, but he doesn't really use that that often. Which is a bit weird because it seems like it would be the most sure thing to actually hit you. Also a bit of a word of warning, uh, you do want to be careful because Huey might actually take massive damage from those flame fans on the side when you do decide to trigger them. I think he is relatively invulnerable whenever he's actually biting down on Lorenzo, but Once you've done enough damage, for no apparent reason, Lorenzo just just decides to dump himself off into the lava. Really, this is just a very odd boss fight to end the game after all the puzzle fights and... I guess just really cinematic fights that we've had so far in the game. I mean, the, the setting was actually very, uh, very action oriented but I don't know it just doesn't really seem to fit the game overall but now it is time to head towards that door we unlocked and hopefully finally get the hell out of this place because it seems to be collapsing around us But the game isn't entirely done shoving dick moves into our face. It seems that Lorenzo there actually isn't fully dead yet. No, no, he is just a flaming cadaver that wishes to give us a nice big flaming hug. 
At this point in the game, if he actually does manage to catch, a, well, catch us, he will actually kill us in one hit. And that would make this part one of the most annoying parts in the game, bar none. Especially as you see, there are earthquakes which will knock you down, and this... This is such a massive dick move. Now when you are initially playing this, you're immediately struck off guard. You're not actually sure what you're supposed to do here, but what you're supposed to do is break your finger mashing the O button as hard as you possibly can. Because even then, you barely have enough time as long as you've been dodging all the earthquakes. And hopefully you did make sure to unlock this door because you have precious few seconds to get away. And just like that, the fight with Lorenzo is finally at an end. Yeah, his ashes are not going to be bothering us any longer. And we can finally get through that unlocked door, and finally escape from this horrible, horrible hellhole. Thanks, Huey.
And there you have it, folks, the good ending to Haunting Ground. Debilitas is left to care for the Belly Mansion, all by his lonesome, but he's probably happier that way, not to be bothered by the rest of society where he would never fit in. And Fiona, Fiona is now no longer being chased after by any and everyone for her innards, her ovaries, or her azoth. Granted, she may be down two parents and more than likely her own sanity, but she does have a dog who hopefully does not have some sinister undertones and it's just a very good dog. And well, we have all learned a very valuable lesson, which is, I, I guess, never to be birthed from a homunculi and a woman. But. Hopefully you all enjoyed this trek through this wonderful, wonderful boob jiggling game. Hopefully you will join me next time for whatever it is I decide to let's play. And I will be showing off the other three endings in the bonus video, so hopefully you will stick around for that. But with that, this is Negroth saying bye, and I hope you all have a pleasant evening.